if you don't know what the term club hopper means, have you been living under a rock? Truthfully, have you? Because this is concerning. Where is my fishing rod? There you are, you little silly goose. It's time to go fishing. Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Relax with Rainy. If you're new to the series, it's basically where I just talk about different topics while I do stuff in the game. I frolic, I train. And today's hot topic is club culture, which I feel like I've got a lot to say, mostly because of the notes that I've already taken. But yeah, I'm gonna be trying to grind for some Yorvik shillings. I might go fishing, who knows? It's kind of up in the air at this point. But anyways, let's just get into it. I hope you guys don't mind that I keep my depth of field off when I play. I just, I can't stand not being able to really see where I'm going. I need to write down what my tasks are because I will forget where I need to go and what I need to get. Look, do you see how much freaking money this gives you, dude? If you're not partaking, what are you, what are you doing with your life? You gotta get on the train. It's a great way to make bank in this game. So I think the first thing I wanna start talking about is friends, making friends in the Star Stable Club. It can can be kind of difficult depending on are you an extrovert are you an introvert ambivert you know was i getting i literally oh my god no for instance let's say you join a club and you know absolutely nobody it can be kind of hard to integrate yourself usually you can find like one person who you seem to like gravitate towards or like I don't know, have a lot in common with, and then you can kind of go from there. And if they have other friends in the club, then you can kind of go off of that. But like, if you don't know anybody and when you like talk, like nobody responds to you, that can be kind of, it can be kind of awkward and it makes you feel alone. So I can totally see where some people are coming from when they join a club and they're just like, nobody talks to me. I can't remember if there was a club that I was in that I felt that way, but I've definitely had experiences where I've just been like blatantly ignored. And it's, it's a really sucky feeling. If we think about like what is it like for people who are already in the club and then new people join, sometimes you can try to engage with new people but they don't always engage back and it can be really hard to gauge whether or not they want to be your friend or they don't. It's difficult. Like I can see both sides. I typically try to like incorporate people or reach out to someone like in a social situation so that they feel like they have a chance to be part of the conversation because I think sometimes you just need a lifeline. You just need somebody to reach out to you and then you get established. I feel like that's something that I've appreciated in the past and I try to be that person for others but you know sometimes you reach out and you get nothing back but at least you tried. At least you tried. Where, where's, where does he live? At? Where does Idris live? Nilmer's Nilmer's Highland. I don't know why I said Highland. Ew, I hated that. Another thing that really sucks is like cliques. I mean, some cliques are so tight knit and they literally will not have anything to do with other people. Like it, it's almost as if no one else exists but the people in their group. It's the kind of people that like in school, I remember like there would be like this one group of girls and they pretty much only spoke to one another. And if anything happened around each other, they talked to one another as if no one else could hear them and they were just like in their own world and everyone else was just so weird and it's just like everything was super funny to them and I just it was just that was a crazy time in my life but like star stable clicks they're their own breed do I even have my fishing rod nope I don't there's something so like upsetting about being like ignored in a game I don't know how to explain it but it's a different type of hurt especially like if you joined a club and it seemed so like kind and inclusive in like their advertising or like let's say they post like clips of their own club and you're like oh my god I want to be a part of that that looks super fun they seem really nice and then you're a part of it and it's just like it's a closed off wall you know it's like a, a mean girl situation like you can't sit with us like I don't know how to explain it but it really sucks and I feel really bad for people who have gone through that and if you know how that feels I hate that for you and I wish you didn't have to experience that but if that's happening to you in a club and you don't like it there and it's just not a good fit don't stay don't stay. There are better clubs out there, I promise you. Don't settle. Just like don't settle for a partner. Don't settle for a club, okay? It's a star stable club. There are tons of other clubs out there. And if you're like, oh, well, Rainy, I really want to stay with this one club. It has so much clout. It's so well known. Don't stay with a club because it's got clout. One thing I will bring up is like my problem with clubs that are like 50 out of 50 members and they have like a ton of people who show up to these events. I feel like they're so fake. I 
feel like I'm gonna get hated on for saying that. No, okay, not all clubs, but a lot of bigger clubs. They feel so fake. It's like nobody really knows each other and they just like being in the pictures where it's a ton of freaking people. It's just like when a ton of people stand at Steve's and stare at you in a line. Like, what are you gaining from that? Like, I think it's cute when a club will like stand together before an event, but if you're just like camping at a place, doing nothing, but trying to like intimidate other people, it's a horse game, bro. <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? You really care about being popular in a horse game? That's, that's, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. But you know what? You do you. I just, I have my own, I have my own thoughts and opinions on that. <laughs> I remember it's like a fever dream, but like when there were some super big clubs on Nightstar, super well known. And it was back in the day when everything was like really active with them. A lot of them have just died. Like they, they're, they're just dead. And I just wonder if a lot of the new players even know who those big clubs are. Like I, I'm very curious to know who, like what clubs a new player would name that they think is like super popular and well known. Because my answers I feel like are outdated. <laughs> I can't really name a lot of clubs nowadays that are like well known. Like they have that credibility. I have been in a club in the past where like they could get a ton of people online. Like a ton. I was only a trial. I don't think I ever completed. Did I complete my trial? I don't remember. I think I decided I was like, I, I don't want to buy this horse. I don't like the outfit. I, I don't, I don't like this. I didn't really vibe with the people there either. I don't know. It just wasn't for me. I think like every club kind of has its own vibe as far as like the maturity levels. And that club did not align with like my, I'm not gonna say my level of maturity because that sounds so stupid. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm silly goofy, totally. But like, that was next level. I love cringy jokes, okay? I love a good dad joke. Um, that's my kind of humor. Like, I love that. Here, let me, let me give you a little taste. This is a joke that I came up with when I was a life guard and I used to basically while I watched people swim I just kind of had to like be alone with my thoughts while I watched so I would create like dad jokes so here is I don't know I might do two anyways okay here's the first joke two pieces of bread got married what did the maid of honor say at the reception I'd like to make a toast <laughs> get it because it's two but they're they're two pieces of bread and they're like when you add a in your you know it's awful i know it's horrible and that's what i love about it like it's so stupid it's just so bad what's another joke that i came up with oh oh this is a good one if you don't if you're like young you probably will not get this it's not inappropriate it's just like anyways where does a snail get his gas think about it think about it shell see need i say more need i explain more no but basically yeah my humor was more like i don't know stupid but like their humor was like cringy brain rot like young middle school kind of humor okay so i'm gonna talk about some of like the disappointing things about clubs i guess uh, i'll start with basically when people join a club they'll say like a hey nice to meet you guys and then sometimes they'll just drop off the face of the planet it was just like a hi goodbye that's it. Talk to you never again. And it's kind of sad. Like, it's really sad. I would love to get to know more people. It's just like, sometimes they just don't care to interact. And it really just makes a person think like, why, why would you join a club if you don't want to interact? And I will say, I completely get if you've got things going on, but I think it would be great, especially if you're still a trial or just regardless. Give somebody a heads up, like a sentence. Hey, some things have come up and I'm not going to be very active. I sincerely apologize and I will resume normal member activities when things get cleared up. I'll try to keep you posted. I just feel like it's courtesy, but yeah. Uh, the next thing is club hoppers. If you don't know what the term club hopper means, have you been living under a rock? Truthfully, have you? Because this is concerning. But basically, a club hopper is somebody who hops from club to club. Like they're there for maybe a week and then they leave. Sometimes they'll leave without saying anything. Sometimes they'll leave like in the middle of an event or they'll leave completely out of the blue and say nothing to anyone. Or, or sometimes they'll say something and like make up an excuse. And like, let's say they're like, I'm quitting Star Stable. I'm never playing again. And then you see on their like story or something like a week later that they're like, oh my God, I'm so excited to be a part of this club. And it's a completely different club. 
if you want to avoid conflict confrontation just be honest and you know what even if there is like confrontation about it just block the people just be honest and just say that it wasn't for you or i don't know like actually give thought to the club you're about to join because you really don't want to be wasting a club owner's time or staff members if they're the ones helping like review applications i just think it's it's disrespectful and immature to waste their time you may not realize it or you may not want to come to terms with it but when you make decisions like that it sticks with your name like people remember your name and the decisions that you made in the future like if you think when you joined a club and it was kind of messy when you left and you think oh no one's gonna remember that and then later on you end up applying for a different club and then you think you're gonna get in and then the members have to review it staff hears about it we're going through like the final parts of an application and a member says like hey i know that person and they did this this and this when i was in a club with them in the past like we hear about that and like that can be the the one thing that keeps you from getting into the club there's a champ in 10 minutes and i would like to do the champ basically to make a long story short because i've kind of gone off on a tangent you know when people talk about a digital footprint yeah when you club hop that's your footprint okay in the star stable community like people 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 don't forget that and i completely understand if like let's say you used to make those decisions and then later on you decide like hey i'm not gonna do that anymore maybe like in your next application try to i don't know assert that like if they ask you why are you applying for this club maybe you can say something along the lines of like after careful consideration and discernment i feel that your club could be the right fit for me and would love to have the opportunity to try it out yeah i think if you make it clear like that even if you've had like a club hopper past you can turn away <laughs> you can turn away from that behavior and um find a family that fits you and one that you'll stay with the next thing i want to talk about is kind of like i guess it's like club owner x it's a tough job already but there are some things that i think some club owners would do well to work on i think a lot of times if you haven't experienced this i'm very surprised but club owners can kind of have favoritism i know crazy right you'd never think that was sarcasm by the way anyways they just blatantly outright show favoritism to some members whether it be members that they've known for a long time or just newbies that they've kind of picked up and they really really like them like let's say they just accepted a new batch of members and there's one that they really like and they're just so blatant about it i think that sometimes they're not very conscious about that behavior and what they're saying and how it can negatively affect newer members that are also like just trying to integrate themselves and get to know everyone i mean think about it you're the owner like you wanted them to be there you chose their application you chose them to be a part of the club now and if they feel like they're already kind of like snubbed in the beginning why would they want to stay you know you've already made up your mind you've got a, a right hand man like a favorite i just don't think it's fair and i think it's something that it would be really good if some club owners were a little bit more empathetic um thoughtful you know before they outwardly express that favoritism and definitely try to include the others just as much as oh my god another thing i think would be wise is to not neglect planning and the enjoyment of an event like are your members going to be entertained for an hour is it going to be inclusive that a lot of your members can participate like let's say you host an event and it's only for people that have valorant what if there's only like three people out of like your 30 members that have valorant don't make that an event just play valorant on your own time but have an event that is able to include most of your club if not all on the topic of quality basically let's talk about quality over quantity because as i was talking about earlier with these like 50 out of 50 clubs i feel like a lot of people neglect in the beginning accepting the right people they want to accept as many people as they possibly can to kind of trigger like fomo for other people like they're like oh my god that, that club is so big and so cool and i want to be a part of it and they end up just like cultivating a group of people that don't really mesh well together whether it be just how they are as people maturity levels age ranges which is a whole nother thing that i'm going to be getting into and like i don't think it's about having a ton of members. I would rather have a smaller club with people that I truly felt connected to and felt like they were my good friends and that they were really a part of the club. Like they were really a part of the family and they cared about one another and they wanted to show up to the events just because they enjoyed being around each other. I would rather have that over a 50 out of 50 club where people were like, they weren't actually friends and they didn't care about making friends. It was just about standing in a photo with like 49 other people and looking cool 
cool. I just feel like that kind of sucks. But if that's, if that's your taste, that's your taste. You know, it's fine. Not a big deal. And then the last thing about club owners or just staff, you know, just anybody, anybody. But mostly I'm going to talk about club owners and that is transparency, but like not trauma dumping. Hey guys, it's voiceover rainy. I just kind of wanted to reiterate what I say in this part of the video, just because I felt like I could say it better than I did. Basically what I talk about is the fact that I feel like club owners need to maintain healthy boundaries with their club members, mostly because um, in my experience, when they either trauma dump or overshare, it makes a lot of people, including myself, uncomfortable. In the past, I was in a club and I was on a call with basically most of the, the club and it was after like a practice and the club owner was like, she basically called a meeting and then started going into like crazy detail about her personal life. It was a lot of potentially triggering stuff. I mean, I was still a trial in the club and I just felt like there's a time and a place to discuss things like that. And you have to be mindful about what you're saying, especially when, like I said, it was, it was potentially triggering things. I just, I felt like the situation could have been handled better. I completely understand wanting to be open and honest with your club members and transparent about mental health, but I think there's a difference between doing that in a space that's been established to be a safe space and one that everyone feels comfortable listening to that type of information because not everybody can deal with that. I've heard like countless stories of people talking about how they've had a club owner basically like cling to them and choose them to be someone that they trauma dump on or manipulate emotionally. While I can understand that sometimes being a club owner can be very isolating, it doesn't merit that kind of behavior. It doesn't make it okay to force somebody to listen to you and your problems. But to kind of like reel it in, basically I just think that it's really important for club owners to have healthy boundaries with their members and um, maintain some sort of professionalism. If for some reason your club is different and you work it differently and you guys are super like outward about your problems, that's a different setting. I just feel like in most cases people appreciate healthy boundaries. But you know, every club dynamic is different. So if that's how you want to conduct yourself, that's how you want to conduct yourself. Completely up to you. The last thing I want to touch on about club culture is having a large age range or just age ranges in general because it's I feel like it's a pretty controversial topic or it can get a little bit I don't know uncomfortable to talk about oh, I remember I wanted to get my fishing rod I wanted to go fishing I have a form that I post uh that's like topics that people want me to talk about for relax with rainy and someone mentioned they wanted me to talk about like child safety and stuff like that and um I feel like this kind of touches on it where is my fishing rod there are you are, you little silly goose. It's time to go fishing. Hi guys, it's voiceover rainy again. Surprise, surprise. Unfortunately, it seems as though I cannot form cohesive thoughts while performing fishing dailies. So that's why I'm here again. Did you miss me? I didn't think so. So basically in this part of the video, I kind of talk about having combined age groups in a club and I would say pros and cons, but didn't really seem to be a lot of pros on combining age groups, unfortunately. Anyways, with having younger members in a club with adults. The younger people can sometimes see the adults as role models. However, that can be a lot of pressure on adults. And I will also say that not all influences are good influences. Some adult members will take younger members under their wing and it kind of can be like a big sibling type of relationship, but I, it's kind of a hit or miss. And unfortunately, some adults are sketchy and you have to be careful. Moving more into cons, because I have an overwhelming amount of them. So sometimes people can forget who's around them and they'll say things that aren't necessarily suitable for younger audiences. And unless you've clarified in your club that, that hey, sometimes we go over topics that are on the more mature side, if you haven't made that disclaimer, then that could uh, get you into some deeper water. And also not all adults are particularly welcoming to kids. And I don't feel like adults should feel obligated to be around kids or anything but if you're in a club that has mixed ages, it can be off-putting to kind of, I don't know, see like an adult bully a kid. And sometimes they do it subtly. It, it's very, it can go unnoticed or unspoken about. I've seen and heard a lot of experiences where kids have trouble either jumping into conversations with older kids or adults, and then they feel alienated or they get alienated. And also they may not always know how to relate with adults or older kids. And it just ends up, having them 
them feel like they need to leave, or they just do. I think I have a lot of negative stories in comparison to positive stories in those cases, but that's just my personal experience. My final thoughts really are that if you're gonna combine age groups, you need to choose your members wisely. Because at the end of the day, if you are the club owner or you're a staff member helping make decisions, then you're cultivating the environment. And should it need revision in the future, because let's say like someone is creating issues amongst members, you need to be prepared to take action. And you need to make sure that you're not being biased and you need to make sure that you're not unapproachable. Because if people feel like they can't come to you with issues, then that in itself is an issue. And I think that club owners can have almost a blindness to their own problems because a lot of people don't want to go up against their club owners. Especially if the club owner themselves or multiple club owners have created this dynamic where they're not willing to accept criticism from like staff members or anything like that or even members. Sometimes they're just, for lack of a better term, tyrannical instead of having like a democracy, which I know that's a whole thing and I'm, I'm maybe I'm getting too deep into this, but I feel like it's not really talked about. But lastly, if you're not prepared or interested in prioritizing the safety of your members, especially minors, then I honestly think it would be wise to reassess whether or not you need to have that age group in your club because it is a important responsibility. And while I understand like there are going to be people that create clubs and they don't care about the safety of their members and there's going to be like young kids who make clubs and aren't even aware of those kinds of responsibilities. I, I know like that's going to happen. But if you're an adult and you're able to engage critical thinking skills, then I think that this is definitely an important topic to pay heed to and um, give thought to. But yeah, I'm so sorry that this video ended so serious, but uh, it's just kind of what I ended up ending the video on. But I am very curious if you guys have any positive experiences with combined age groups and feel free to share or just any experience. I'm happy to listen. All right, as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing. Feel free to share your opinions in the comments, but I ask that you do remain respectful. And if you haven't checked out any of my other Relax With Rainy videos, there will be a playlist linked on your screen now. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it is at Stephanie Rainbridge and my TikTok is at S Rainbridge. All right, everybody, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.